Dave Thompson has always wanted to build spaceships. As a three-year-old toddler, Dave and his parents watched one of the early Russian satellites pass over their home at twilight one evening, sparking his lifelong fascination with rockets and space vehicles. While in grammar school, Dave built a kid-sized Gemini spacecraft in his basement, using Christmas tree lights for computer displays and beach chairs for ejection seats. During his high school years, Dave designed and built a series of increasingly powerful amateur rockets, culminating in a vehicle that launched small monkeys to altitudes of nearly a mile above his cow pasture launch site. After earning degrees in aerospace engineering from MIT and Caltech, Dave went to work for NASA in Huntsville, Alabama. It was there during the late 1970s that he conceived the idea for a private space company that would use NASA-developed technology to create new ways of making space affordable and accessible to broader markets. So as a young engineer with no management experience, Dave decided to enroll in business school to pursue his concept for a commercial space enterprise. Well, I first met Dave in the fall of 1979 when we both were entering the MBA program at uh, Harvard. In that first year, noticed two, principally two things. Uh, he was quiet. The other thing I noticed was his focus and determination, his vision for what his life was going to be about. Well, on our first date, we went to Pizza Hut, and we, it was starting to rain, and he started to tell me about how, f how to calculate how fast a raindrop falls. And I kind of knew that he was a pretty serious guy after that. Dave was both visionary and focused. Uh, he saw the potential for commercial development of space long before others and he was focused on uh, making his mark that way. In 1982, Dave, Scott Webster, and another Harvard classmate, Bruce Ferguson, started Orbital with a total capitalization of $1,500. Our world headquarters was this two-bedroom townhouse in Southern California. I'm the only one that had a steady paycheck. The guys were off traveling around trying to raise money and sell their idea. I have known him off and on for decades uh, and he has been one that I've always admired. One, for his leadership, two, for his humility, uh, and three, for just his vision uh, about um, you know, where we should be going as a nation uh, in the field of aerospace, but also uh, being a, an incredible partner for NASA. We were interested in rocket propulsions and uh, at that time NASA's space shuttle was brand new and it was built using really all of the congressional appropriation of money so it was a naked vehicle. It had very little in the way of other capabilities, upper stages in particular, that could take satellite payloads to higher altitude operational orbits. So we, um, in the early days, were looking at projects that might involve rockets that would fit in the cargo bay of the space shuttle. If you look at the work that Orbital has done since its inception, uh, it's always been kind of out front uh, on the cutting edge of things that, that support NASA and, uh, and our aerospace community. It was in January 1986 that we were all gathered in a little conference room in our office in Virginia watching a shuttle launch, which turned out to be the Challenger accident. So we saw in that a large part of our market just simply go away. It was that that gave rise to our second product, uh, which actually to date is probably our uh, flagship, uh, and that is the uh, Pegasus air launch rocket. And the intent of Dave's founding was not just to have fun building and launching rockets, it was really to, to make a business with things space. We wanted to build a constellation of small satellites that did some unique forms of communication. So we started Pegasus in order to provide ourselves with means for launching these small satellites. He has been commercial space long before people started talking about it in a formal vein the way that we do today at NASA. Uh, if you look at Pegasus, the idea of taking a, 
you know, a rocket dropping it off the wing of an airplane, a, a normal airplane, and then having it go into space. People thought about that a lot, but Dave made it happen. Uh, you know, they have in excess of 130 missions that they have flown for NASA, and, and we've paid them a fee for service. That's commercial space. I met Dave now almost like uh, 15 years ago, and it was through some of the early missions that we were doing jointly between uh, JPL and Orbital, and he immediately struck me as, as a great guy, a first-rate leader, very knowledgeable. Dave was always very excited about the science, you know, and doing scientific missions. Dave came and he said, you know, we are really interested because my company, even that it will not be big business for us, but my company and I are interested in doing space exploration, in possibly working with JPL on doing planetary missions. And, uh, we, and he had this vision about that, uh, that is really something important for the country, important for science. And that's what led us to do GALAX, you know, jointly, which is an astronomy mission, which worked superbly to do together a Dawn mission, uh, of putting Dawn in orbit around Vesta. For the first time, we are exploring uh, some of the largest asteroids, you know, in our solar system. And Orbital and Dave deserve a lot of credit you know, for making that happen and making it happening very successfully. We've got to get NASA out of the business of owning and operating vehicles for low Earth orbit operations and hand that off to our commercial partners so they can do it, something that, that's their business and that they know how to do. And Dave, David knows how to do it probably as well as anybody out there. Under Dave's leadership, Orbital has built or is now constructing more than 150 satellites for applications ranging from commercial communications to scientific research. It has also produced and launched 80 space and strategic launch vehicles and over 450 target vehicles and sounding rockets. In the process, the company has grown at an annual rate in excess of 25% over the past three decades from less than $100,000 in sales in 1982 to a projected $1.5 billion in revenue in 2012. Today, Orbital generates direct and indirect employment for over 10,000 people across the United States, with major engineering and manufacturing facilities in Virginia and Arizona, and active launch operations on both coasts. It's a child probably in Dave is the excitement about exploring and the commitment to explore is something which gives you that courage and and of course you need to be smart you know to to back that that, that boldness was uh, was credibility when I think about other people who have received von Karman in the past and, and what I think it stands for which is excellence in, in aerospace and aerospace science uh, I think there's no one more deserving today than than David I think Dave is a great pick for the Von Karman Wings Award because he was first to see this new era in space and do something about it. And he had the focus and toughness and determination to do something about it and see it through some extremely tough times. So I think he's earned it the old fashioned way. Uh, he just did the work. He's the real deal. Well, I think the best advice that my dad's ever given me, and he's never explicitly said it, but it's something that I have sort of seen in him that I've wanted to mold and kind of recreate myself, is to be passionate about something, no matter what that is. It doesn't need to be a science or, um, you know, a business, but just being passionate about what you want to do, I think is the, big, the, the greatest thing that he's ever taught me. It's fun to be married to someone who is an explorer and doesn't really need to leave home to explore.